Have you ever spent hours and hours tossing cubes in VR? Well, me neither. <laughs> in this episode, I will introduce how to interact with objects. I will show you the different movement types and what the difference between them. Let's get started. So we are back in Unity. So if we want to grab objects, uh, we basically going to need two things. So we need an object that is interactable and also we need our hands to be able to detect that we are grabbing something. Because at this point, if we, are, if we are pulling the trigger, it's only doing animation. So first we need to make our hands be capable of grabbing objects. So to do that, just select the left hand controller and right hand controller. We are going to add the XR direct interactor. So the script also needs a collider. So it's going to detect is the interactable object is in within its collider. So to do that, I'm going to go with a sphere collider. So right now it's too big, so I'm going to reduce the radius to 0.1. And what's really important, it needs to be a trigger. So I'm just going to check this box. First, I'm just going to create a cube. Reset its transform and I'm going to set the scale to 0.1 on all axis. So just put it on the table. And I'm going to add the XR grab interactable component to this object. As you can see, it's automatically added a rigid body. At the script, the most important thing is the movement type. You can set it to three different ones. First is the instantaneous, the kinematic and the velocity tracking. So I'm going to demonstrate what's the difference between these three. So just duplicate this cube twice. And I'm going to set the second one to kinematic and the third one to velocity tracking. And I'm also going to apply a material so we can differentiate between the three types. So to do that, I'm just going to use the polygon starter pack materials plane. And I give the first one a red color, the second one a blue and the third one this yellowish black. I know it looks weird, but it's just for demonstration. And now just start play mode. So first, I, as you can see, I can grab these objects. And now let's see the differences. So I just grabbed the instantaneous. And as you can see, the movement is really smooth, but you can move through any object. So it doesn't interact with any physical object. This is because uh, the instantaneous is disabling the rigid body. So the second one is the kinematic. And this won't collide with any object that doesn't have a rigid body. So this crane right now only have, have a box collider, so it doesn't collide with it. The last one is the velocity tracking. And as you can see, it does collide with the, with the crane. So you can ask what was the difference between the kinematic and the instantaneous? Well, if you grab the instantaneous and you try to move the other cubes, as you can see, it behaves really strange. But if you do the same with the kinematic, it will behave as expected. It's also true for the velocity tracking. Okay, so that's the difference between the free movement type. So now I'm going to delete these three cubes. I'm going to add three prefab. The first one's going to be a pistol. The second one's going to be a shield. And the third one's going to be a bird. So I'm just going to Rotate them. Okay, and I'm going to select all three of them. And I'm going to add the XR grab interactable to all three of them. So on the pistol, I'm just going to leave it instantaneous. The shield, I'm going to change it to kinematic. And the sword is going to be velocity tracking. Okay, and I start play mode now. So let's grab the pistol. And as you can see, the position is really out and it's going to be the same with the shield and the third. So that's one issue. The other, if you grab the shield and you move it closer to your body and you try to move, it's going to have this strange effect. So we just exit play mode and we are going to fix these issues. 
So, start with that strange behavior. The reason is why it's happening is because on the XR origin, we have a character controller, which is a collider, and it's colliding with the Shields collider. So, what we need to do is just disable the collision between these objects. So we can do that using layers. So I'm going to create two layers. One of them is going to be interactable. And the other is going to be player. I'm going to select the shield, the pistol and the third, and I'm going to change its layer to interactables. And I'm going to change it to all its children. I click to the XR origin and I'm going to change its layer to player. But this time I'm, I'm not going to apply it to all of its children because if we apply it to the left hand and right hand controller, it won't be able to interact with these interactable objects. So next, and we are just going to edit project settings. And here at the physics tab, the bottom, we are going to disable the collision between the interactables and the player. So I'm just uncheck this box. So just start play mode and we check if it's working. So I grab the shield, I move it closer to my body and I just move around without the strange behavior. So next we are going to fix the issues of the position of the grab. So if you select the pistol, at the XR grab interactable, you can see a field called attach transform. So it's basically a position that it's going to be attached to. So we can modify this position based on our needs. So to create one, I'm just going to right click, create empty. I'm going to call it attach transform. And I'm going to drag it to this attach transform field. Okay, right now it's not going to do anything because we need to find it, the position what we want. And it can be a real tricky because on play mode it doesn't update real time. So it's just a drag to set the right position. But there's a real useful trick that we can use. And this is the dynamic attach feature. It's basically allows us to grab any object at any position and it's going to be that position that we are attached to. I'm just going to demonstrate the bigger object. So I'm going to enable the dynamic attach on the shield. So if we start play mode, so as you can see, now I can grab it any position I want to. And because if I grab it at any position, and if you check it out in the inspector, you can see there's a left hand controller dynamic attach transform has been created. So I can copy these components and paste it back to my attach transform. And after if I disable the dynamic attach, I'm going to be able to grab it at this exact location every time I'm grabbing it. So let's use this feature. So I'm going to select the pistol at the shield and the third. I'm just going to enable the dynamic attach. And I'm also going to add each of them empty attach transform component. Okay, so just need to do it one by one. So start play mode and start with the pistol. So I'm just trying to grab it at the right position. Yeah, that looks decent. So I'm just gonna hold the grip. And in Unity, you can see the dynamic attach transform just copy and exit play mode and now we can paste this component values so if we go back to the pistol and disable the dynamic attach and start play mode so if you grab the pistol it's going to have this attach transform position so let's do the same with the other two Let's try it out. So start with the pistol. Yeah, perfect. And the shield. Yeah, looks all right. And then the third. Perfect. Might not be visible in the video, but if you move the 
sword and the shield, it has some jittery movement. And the instantaneous pistol is really smooth. So the reason is because the instantaneous removed the rigid body, so its position is being updated in the update function, but the kinematic and the velocity tracking position is updated in the fixed update function, which means Unity's physics update is set to a certain value, so it's always gonna update that much, which means basically it's frame rate independent. So if we check it out in the edit uh, project settings, time and you can see the fixed time step it's 0 0.02 which means 50 calculation per second and the quest in my case right now at 90 hertz so if i set it to 1 divided by 90 and start play mode it's going to be as smooth as the instantaneous But bear in mind, this is really heavy calculation, so it, so it can slow down your game significantly. So I'm going to say back to the original settings. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we are going to have a shooting mechanism and we will be able to shoot some dummy targets. So if you're interested, then hit the subscribe button so you won't miss my future videos. And see you in the next one.